Hey everybody, welcome to the Classic Movie Gush number 12, little Halloween edition, talking about a movie. Uh, actually, we got this one recommended from somebody over at Melissa's site. I'm Clay Morgan with Melissa Tag, and uh, her name is Rachel Muller, and she said, why don't you guys talk about arsenic and old lace? And as we were trying to come up with the perfect movie for Halloween, I came out with the usual suspects, and I said, well, what about Dracula? What about Frankenstein? But we didn't really feel like doing those. And then you said, well, what about the birds? And I said, yeah, the birds is good, but <laughs> I didn't feel like doing those traditional Hollywood horror movies. Yeah. And, uh, and then we stumbled across a movie that is literally set on Halloween Day. And, oh, my goodness, Arsenic and Old Lace it's one of my favorite movies ever, instantly. It's just... <laughs> Wait, it's so, had you never so seen mean. it before? I had never seen it before. I can't believe that like, no oh, one told me. I, there should have been an intervention. Like, <laughs> anybody who's ever known me should have said, Clay, this is so you. It's a, it's a horror comedy. Um, yeah, dark comedy. It's a dark comedy, but it's actually um, you know one of the earlier ones, and it's directed by Frank Capra. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of on a string of Frank Capra. Yeah, we, uh, we're we going to be moving away from Frank Capra sometime after December, right? For, <laughs> for a bit? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, so uh, the movie stars Cary Grant, Priscilla Lane, and many other people who we're going to talk about. Um, I think that the cast is the story. As much as the story is the story, the, we, we said during the Philadelphia story that that was about as close to perfect casting as you can get, certainly for leading roles. Well, this is about as perfect casting as you can get for an entire film as I've ever yeah. seen. There's there's a lot of roles in this film, too. So, yeah. yeah. So let's they, talk about it. 1944, okay. tell us, Melissa Tag, as is your specialty, what is this film <laughs> about? Uh, okay. <laughs> this one's a hard one to say what it's about. Yeah. This movie starts out with Cary Grant and his love interest, Priscilla Lane, who, let's just mention, is from Indianola, Iowa. I know, um, she's from it, Iowa. Yeah, she's from <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> so they get married right in the beginning of the film, and they go home to Cary Grant's aunt's house. They, they actually, Cary Grant's aunt and Priscilla Lane's dad, I believe, are neighbors, so they go home to their respective houses, and Cary Grant's super excited to tell his aunt that he is married. Uh, but when he gets there, he makes a very disturbing discovery. He finds a body in a window seat and comes to find out that his lovely old aunt, um, as a form of charity and helping the world, make it a habit to poison lonely old men and put them out of their misery <laughs> and um, bury them in their basement. And so... He's very upset about that. And the whole rest of the movie is him basically dealing with the insanity in his family. Um, not only does he have these two sweet murdering aunts, he also has a brother who thinks he's Teddy Roosevelt, who is hilarious. He has another brother who is a murderer that shows up about halfway through the movie. Um, yeah. D did I kind of get the gist of what the movie's I, about? I, I think you've got it pretty well. <laughs> Arsenic and Old Lace is a very famous and successful play that appeared... And uh, the question was, could Frank Capra convert it into a workable movie form? And really, I should say, Julius and Philip Epstein, who were the screenwriters, could they adapt a version that, that would even mm -hmm. start to look like something that would work on screen? And um, you mentioned the ants, and let's just go there, because <laughs> so uh, great. Josephine Hall and Gina Dare, and I knew Josephine Hall from Harvey, she actually won the Best Supporting Actress, Actor for I Harvey. I love Harvey. Oh, that movie is so good. She is so brilliant. And these mm -hmm. two women in these roles are so perfect. That yeah. It is, it's just so wonderful. They're, they're like, yeah, of course we poison people. It's just so matter-of-fact, <laughs> and they're so sweet. Yeah. And why are you so disturbed, yeah. honey? Um, but they actually came over yeah. from the Broadway production. So, uh, as did Teddy Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. um, those were all part of the Broadway cast. Mm -hmm. And um, Cary Grant. Now, another weird thing about this, he plays the lead role, but they didn't think that Cary Grant would ever be in this film. And mm -hmm. when they found out he was available in 1941, they took two months and shot the thing, even though the movie mm -hmm. couldn't come out until 1944. Right. So, yeah. talk a little bit about... Um, about what you know about these performances and how they got this all to, to come off? Well, 
Yeah, like you said, they filmed it in just a couple months in 1941, but they weren't allowed to actually release it until um, the Broadway performance closed, and so it just kind of sat there for a while. Um, I actually think they showed it maybe in other countries first, but mm. eventually it finally opened here, and um, so many of the people from the Broadway play performed in the movie. The one person that couldn't, that was in a main role on Broadway, um, was Boris Karloff, and um, so if you watch Arsenic and Old Lakes, the guy who does play Jonathan, his name is Raymond Massey, they are constantly saying to him that he looks exactly like Boris Karloff, and that is a running gag because Boris Karloff plays Jonathan on stage. And every yeah, time yeah. he hears it, he snaps. He, he wants to crazy, murder yeah. it. Yeah, he goes it's crazy. so funny. Raymond yeah. Massey, by the way, he was a very famous actor. He played Abraham Lincoln yeah. for like 30 years mm -hmm. in everything. Yeah. Yeah, you want to know a funny Raymond Massey side side story? Yeah. So there's a movie called Adam's Rib with Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, which is partially inspired by Raymond Massey and his second wife, who decided to get divorced, and they were represented by a famous husband and wife lawyer pair. And so the wife was represented by this husband, and the husband was represented by this wife. This is two separate couples. So they get divorced. After they get divorced, they, 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 the husband from the, the lawyer husband married the wife, and the wife lawyer married the, the ex-husband. I'm not explaining it well, but it's really funny, and they all lived happily ever after. Basically, they switched spouses. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and they all lived happily ever after. So, But not in the my... typical creepy Hollywood way. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a funny story. Yeah, Raymond and Massey at... stepped in for Boris Karloff. Um, can you tell me about Priscilla Lane? Because once again, sure. I'm, I'm kind of discovering an actress, and I was like, sh first of all, she's stunning, and mm -hmm. she she's is funny. She's so funny. She's the girl next door. It, she's just mm -hmm. so great. And uh, so, of course, you know, here I am doing my research to figure out why mm -hmm. I didn't hear about her. And her career mm -hmm. just kind of ended, and she went and started a family and raised four children. Yeah. I'm yeah. always amazed at these incredibly talented actors who um, just stepped away right in their prime. Mm -hmm. But she had, I mean, she has the perfect happy story. She's actually the youngest of five daughters from Iowa again. And um, they all ended up going to, or at least most of them ended up going to New York and performing there. And Priscilla actually performed with her sis one of her sisters mainly. Um, her sister sang, and then Priscilla was the funny girl. Um, and so that's kind of how they got picked up as a pair like that. And... Um, yeah, there's fun stuff about her. When she was in New York, she actually went to a, she went to some kind of performance or, or something, and Katherine Hepburn was there. And so there's a letter that she wrote to somebody back here in Iowa saying, I met this person named Katherine Hepburn, and she's not very pretty, and she's not very good. And um, so there's just fun stuff like that. But, um, yeah, she kind of became the Hollywood funny girl for a while, but only starred in maybe 20 movies, maybe, if that. And then ended up getting married and having kids, and she had a really happy ending to her story. Um, hmm. So, yeah. So. I read somewhere yeah. that, um, well, her husband was, uh, he was in the military, and so she was mm -hmm. following she was following him around. Yep. And even though she wasn't in a lot of films for those years, she was using her talents to perform for the troops and to do different mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. So just another, yep. just another one of those cool characters. Um, now let's talk about the movie. There's, I definitely want to talk more about some of the other actors in this film. But uh, the opening starts off with kind of some weird scenes of, like, there's a, there's yeah. a baseball game. Yeah. I think there's a lot of winks to New York. There's, mm -hmm. a lot of, there's a lot of subtle commentary about the nature of film critics. And mm -hmm. uh, there's, yes. there's a lot of stuff happening uh, behind the scenes in this film. And even at the end, when the uh, two ants kind of say, this neighborhood's gone crazy since the baseball team the, won yep, that the championship. Wanted, yeah. Um, so, so there's a lot there, and the on-screen narration is kind of there for about, I don't know, seven or eight minutes at the beginning, <laughs> and then the, yeah. one, the one title <laughs> card pops up and it says, from here on out, you're on your own. You're on your own, yep. And it's so <laughs> screwy, it's just such screwball, you know, typical comedy of that era. Yes, yes, it's so great. It's um, so screwball. Okay, now some of the other early actors that pop up. We watched Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And I think I mentioned this to you when we weren't recording that I thought for a second I saw Ray Bolger, the Scarecrow yeah. of the of Oz, but it mm -hmm. wasn't. And I let it go. So I started <laughs> watching Arsenic and Old Lace, and in the opening three minutes, I saw him again. I'm like, Ray Bolger. <laughs> it's not Ray Bolger. 
So I had to look up this man and find out who in the world is this. His name is Charles Lane. He plays the reporter in the opening yeah. of the movie. Mm -hmm. I did some research on Charles Lane. Do okay. you know that he lived to be 102 years old? And his no. film credits range from the early 1930s until 2006, where he actually Whoa. did he did narration for uh, a, a version of Twas the Night Before Christmas or night something like that. He was a working actor at the age of 100. Um, just an amazing. Holy crap! So, guy. Did, was he was he active all those years or? He was, was active like for like 2006. Like he was active out for of... like 65 years, and then he t he retired, I guess, from like 97 wow. to 2006. He was in a TV okay. movie with Kurt Whoa, Cameron or something crazy. in the 90s. Really? That's so random. I so yeah, know who that guy is. I'm gonna bring some random sides tonight. <laughs> This is exciting. I'm going to learn some things. <laughs> yeah, his IMDb credits span from 1931 to 2006. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. Um, okay, so the movie moves into this house, and basically um, we should add that Peter Lorre is also in the film. Yeah, he's awesome. He's one of the most recognizable, iconic um, actors. He plays. He often plays a villain with that you know, European accent, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he's, he's kind of like a funny drunk type character mm -hmm. in this one. Yeah, he's, he's great. Um, and Jack Carson, the young policeman, every yeah. time I see him, he's always good, but this is definitely the best I've ever seen him. Yeah. We have to talk about Teddy Roosevelt, so do that. Explain why Teddy Roosevelt such a thing. Well, I don't know what to explain other than this character. He thinks it's such a key part of the story. Teddy, yeah, he thinks he's Teddy Roosevelt, and so, like, every time he runs up, like, the stairs to his bedroom, he thinks it's San Juan, so he yells, charge. Um, and then, okay, every time the ants kill somebody, they have Teddy go down to the basement, and they tell him it's the Panama Canal, and they have him basically dig another grave for these dead bodies. Um, and so, yeah, it, there's, oh, there's a key scene in the movie where everything goes dark, and Basically, the ants have had this dead body in their window seat all day, and they keep trying to get it down to the basement, but things keep interrupting them. So they have this scene where it's completely dark, and you just see, like, a slit of light from the basement, and Teddy comes up from the basement and gets the body and carries it down. And then you hear the door shut, and you, ha you hear him fall down the steps, which is really funny, but... And the yeah. ants, they keep talking about the man in the window seat, like, oh, it's Mr. Hoskins. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. so pleasantly. He was such a nice man. Yeah, he was a Methodist. And... Oh, yeah, yeah. We want to have yeah. a proper Christian burial. They get yeah. under the basement, and they, they lay flowers for their murder victims. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They really, they really they're so think sweet. they're doing a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they do. But... It's one of their charities, right? Yeah. It's so um, great. <laughs> I was trying to think, to, to really explain the, the plot, I was laughing as I even told you to do that because it's <laughs> so much of it is visual. Yeah. That, that scene where it's blacked out, it's a very extended scene, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of characters that are in and out, and you could just see how this would have come from, from the stage. It, it's really uh, choreographed, and, I, and, I, and the timing mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a couple of external scenes, and it, of course the... Um, his his young wife's dad is the priest. He's a father. Right. And so there's a cemetery in between the two houses, which is also just like a whole other kind of irony. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> the one thing I wanted to ask you about, and and this is what hit me right away, Cary Grant has never been screwier. I mean, yeah. this movie is so over the top, and he is so funny. His yes. facial expressions in this... When, like when yeah. he discovers the body in the window seat, yeah, and they have like these multiple reaction takes, and the facial expressions he makes all the way through until he literally like breaks the fourth wall for a second <laughs> at mm -hmm. the very end and yep. looks right at the camera. Um, yep. Talk about that because well, he's a brilliant comedian. He's so great at it, but he actually didn't like himself in this role. He said this was his least favorite role. That no. he feels like, yeah, that he felt like he was too over the top. And I actually thought about that when I was watching it this time, and I was like, is he too over the top? And I'm like, how do you get too over the top when it's a movie about old ladies murdering people? Like, I think he's brilliant in it. 
Um, oh, he's so funny. Yeah. He has he, his voice is higher than normal. It's mm-hmm. more excitable and. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, facial. Yeah. It's so totally facial expressions. He's perfect at it. Yeah, he's he's really great. There's this funny line. Um, really, right before he goes into the house, and then the movie pretty much sits down in the living room for most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, he's outside in the graveyard, racing around a tree, kind of playing with his young mm-hmm. wife, and they're mm-hmm. they're they're laughing about their honeymoon to come when they go to Niagara Falls, and um, he's kind of like chasing after her like a wolf. And she says, but Mortimer, you have to love me for my mind, too. And he says, one thing at a time. And he's yes. just, like, diving behind the tree. Oh, uh, yes. There's so many lines and sight gags and random things that happen. I just cannot yeah. tell you how much I loved this movie. Did you, when they were in the cemetery, did you see the tombstone that said Archie Leach on it? It did not. There's a tombstone that says Archie Leach, really? which is Cary Grant's real name. So that was kind of an inside Interesting. Joke. Yeah, that's good. There's a couple of inside Maybe jokes, inside. and I and I would love to hear an yeah. interview where Frank Capra talks about um, what it meant to him, or even the original stage direction when they basically create this crazy film critic or, or play critic. And uh, I love how even part of the story is that people are always coming up to him trying to pitch him ideas. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. There's a part where he's he's his brother Jonathan really wants to kill him and ties him up and is ready to kill him in the movie. And um, the police officer comes in and <laughs> and thinks that he's just acting out this play. That I mean, it's yeah. Oh, it's total. It's total screwball comedy. And they, they yeah. even mention, as Cary Grant's telling the uh, Dr. Einstein, the Peter Lorre character, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a play once, and this guy actually sat in a chair like he didn't even know that he was about to be tied up. <laughs> he's basically giving play-by-play of what's, hap- what's about yeah. to happen to him. Uh-huh. Oh, good. I mean, there's just so many observations about, I think, art, about, mm-hmm. uh, about the creation of stories and plays. Um, mm-hmm. So, Frank Capra, I'm going to have to really start to think about where this movie fits in my estimation <laughs> of Capra because it's a good one. Priscilla Lane, I wish she would have done so much more, and you got about the all-time perfect cast. If for nothing else, you watch this movie to see Josephine Hall and Gina Dare mm-hmm. play their roles as the ants, yeah. do it. It is the perfect Halloween classic Hollywood yeah. film. You did you an excellent laugh. job suggesting it, as did Rachel, so thank you for that. Any, Any other thoughts on arsenic and old lace? I don't know. I just think that people totally need to watch it. It's so great. Here's just a random side note. I saw Arsenic and Old Lace on stage in London, mm. and um, the guy that plays Kramer in Seinfeld, Michael played Richards. The, he played the role of Jonathan, and they kind of twisted the story a little bit, and Jonathan became the main character. Oh, wow. Um, that really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but it was cool to see. <laughs> well, there's been a lot of variations. I actually saw, yeah. I was reading about it in the 80s. There was a there was a uh, run where it was Gene Stapleton Ooh. from um, All in the Family mm-hmm. and Jonathan Frid, who played Barnabas Collins on Dark Shadows. So all different kinds of people have stepped into this, and depending on who the headliners are, I guess, is who gets the emphasis in that adapt- sure. adaptation. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. I just I just love when they're describing so pleasantly their recipe for the we take some elderberry yeah. wine yeah. <laughs> and a little bit of arsenic and strychnine and just a pinch cyanide. of cyanide. Just a pinch. Yeah. Uh, so good. Okay. So okay. arsenic and old lace. Uh, we promise we're not gonna do Frank Capra and Cary Grant every week, but can you really blame not us? Not every week. <laughs> but you know, they're pretty good. All right, we love hearing more recommendations, so let us know what you'd like us to talk about. And check out Arsenic and Old Lace. And if you have seen it, tell us what you thought. See you next time. Mm